storyteller tonight. She is a Chicago-born Jew who followed in her grampy's footsteps by attending the University of Chicago and who follows in her grandma's footsteps by seeing a little too much treasure in other people's crap. She's the first to admit that being an artist of multiple forms, painting, improv, acting, filmmaking, writing, has its challenges, but she is grateful to be adding storytelling into the mix. After performing at Chicago's 2016 Lit Crawl, she is exuberant to resume the storytelling side of all of this tonight with this show. Please put your hands together for Allison Torum! <laughs> One of the most frequent forms of affirmation that I received from my parents was that I was a good eater. Um, around the house, I was known as the bottomless pit. Uh, in eighth grade, Frank Magyar, who was known for, not what you're thinking, he was known for slowly inhaling when someone around us farted. He dared me, he dared me way for it. He dared me to eat a french fry that he had stepped on, um, smushed into the ground, flipped off of his shoe onto the floor with a spork. Um, in exchange for a dollar. And like, what kind of artist would I be? What kind of woman would I be if I had told you a story from 14 years ago and I hadn't said yes? <laughs> like I said yes. Um, one of my first high school friends, uh, Carrie Ferrantella, he used to shush me at Giordano's because uh, the sounds that I made, the noises that I made really, uh, when I made, when I ate deep dish pizza, apparently made it sound like I was having an orgasm under the table. Um, and I guess you have to be there. Um, like, I feel like that's really subjective, like, Carrie, how can you know? I hadn't even had sex at the time, so no one really knew um, what that would sound like. Um, and that song, actually, like, by Maroon 5, where it's like, the noises that she made kept me away. I'm pretty sure that that song was ghostwritten by my college roommate about me eating leftovers during finals week. Um, so in college, um, I actually roomed with a math major. And I know what you're thinking, like this like cool artist is like rooming with this like nerdy math major and you're like, well, they won't they? Like this is hot. No, we didn't. Um, but in our, in our struggle to connect, uh, the thing that I found most confusing in our conversations was not calculus. It was the fact that he didn't experience pleasure when he was eating. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, ew. <laughs> um, and I was like, I was like, honestly, like you're gonna be making six figures by the time you're 23. I will always forever be a starving artist, but I pity you. Like, I, I feel so bad for your empty life. Anyway, so, <laughs> anyhow, he's, he's doing great. He's, he's doing well now. Um, so by the time I'm 27, last summer, uh, food is one of my core values. Uh, that's like fully established. Um, I'm in therapy about it, it's great. Um, but after like years of like stress and self-neglect, ha ha, like my body like, breaks down, ha ha. And in this like crazy case of, of, of brain fog and fatigue, and it's like so bad that when I wake up, I like immediately want to go back to sleep. And I, like I'm having conversations, I'm distracted by this like horrible thick fog in my head. And it was like so bad I could not even read. Um, so my vitals were fine with my ordinary doctor, so I go to a functional doctor. And they told me that in addition to like exorbitant supplements that like of course only they can provide because uh, they're the highest quality, um, they told me to go on to an elimination diet. Uh, and diets are hard, like we're Americans, we know that diets are really hard. Uh, this diet is harder. You have to cut everything inflammatory out. Like it's so much faster to tell you the things that I could eat than the things that I couldn't. Um, everything from like healthy stuff from like legumes and like nuts and seeds to unhealthy stuff like dairy and sugar and gluten. Blah, blah, blah. So I have to cut all this stuff out, but it's like, you don't go on this diet for fun at Six Flags. Like, you, you go on this diet because you're desperate. And I was fucking desperate to feel better, and I would try anything, including become the pickiest eater I have ever met. So I go on the diet, and within a week and a half, my brain fog goes away, my fatigue goes away, I have like function back, I'm like waking up, and the next time I go to sleep is at night. Like, it's a miracle. And in my celebration of, uh, this new feeling of like functioning again. I bring Tupperware, where Tupperware doesn't 
really want to go. So like I bring it from the north side to Hyde Park for a Friendsgiving, and I bring it uh, from Chicago, you know, just to Wisconsin for an overnight wedding um, of our friend uh, Graham. And I bring it to Carrie's Christmas party, um, and everyone else there, you know, is like living it up and like double fisting like Malor and like Miller Light and like I'm double fisting a LaCroix and like an avocado and fruit smoothie and he's like, he still make fun of me for that to this day. <laughs> um, and you know, there were some cool things about it. Like my nutritionist was like, Allie, like you're my favorite, you know, student or patient. I was like, you can call me a patient, it's fine, like let's be honest. Um, you know, like I'm learning as much from you as you are from me. <laughs> I was like, that's really fucked up. <laughs> Where do I send the bill? <laughs> I was like, this is fucking expensive and I'm poor, so a uh, starving artist, call back to that. Um, so yeah, and then when people at parties are just like uh, expressing pity towards me, I'm just like, don't worry about me. Like I, I eat like a queen at home. It's really only hard when I'm in social situations. Um, and it was true. It was, it was actually true. Like, I used avocado to make a sauce for a cucumber noodles. I used squash as like a burger bun. I turned beets into lackeys. Um, and like, my, my veins were like coursing with LaCroix. Like, I was like, I was powerful. <laughs> you know, it was incredible. And, you know, after, after, uh, and I even brought Tupperware on second date sometimes. Like, we don't need to do that. <laughs> but after six months of like being alone, but trying in like a really difficult situation, I was ready to start a reintroduction. And, um, you know, keeping in mind, trying to look out for any food se sensitivities here and there, like, really excited. So I have this tablespoon of sesame oil with some, like, mashed sweet potatoes. And can everyone see me, like, from waist down included? Okay, so I have a tablespoon of uh, sesame oil with the food, and, like, it's so delicious that I'm, like, literally, like, eating with one hand and, like, mopping up on the floor with the other. Like, it's so incredibly good. <laughs> Until the day after when I have brain fog for the first time in six months. And I'm like, oh, shit. So a few days later, I'm like, that was a fluke. Okay. I tried a small handful of almonds. I'd never had enough problems in my entire life. I tried some almonds, and I'm bedridden with fatigue for six days. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So I'm like, not panicking, not panicking, good attitude, good attitude. I go to my doctors, I'm like, hey guys, sup? And they're like, well that's weird. I'm like, um, you're my doctors, can you say something that like, is like, helpful? <laughs> uh, Cause that's like not what I want my trained professionals to say, like that's weird. <laughs> um, like, that sounds like something a seventh grade girl would tell me, which is fine, that's valid, but like you're doctors and... So I'm like, really scared, um, but I have to get back to my like adult life, so I just stay on the diet. Um, and social situations, they take on sort of like a new cast. So like when I'm perceived in like, like a party situation as like that bitch, you know, like the girl who like turns down tasty food because she's like had her cheat meal already this week, I wish I was her. I'm like, how nice would it be to turn down a food that I want for a reason other than like medical necessity? Like that would be great. And if somebody's like, have a cookie, and they're like, I'm invested in what you eat and what you put in your body, have a cookie. Have a cookie, have a cookie, <gasps> have a cookie! Yeah. I'm like, um, I perfect this like female smile that I feel like we've been perfecting for like 20,000 years, like since before we could speak. Women have been turning down delicious foods, so it's like, we're just like. <laughs> um, in lieu of saying, uh, fuck off, I'm happy with my cup of ice, leave me alone. Uh, um, so I'm like perfecting that grin, and if they push me, and they're like, no, you're no fun, ha ha. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't even know how fucking fun I am. I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking human garbage disposal with legs. Like underneath this shit, I'm so fucking fun. They're like, whoa, it's just a cookie. I'm like it's not just a cookie, it's been nine months since I've eaten anything outside of my own kitchen. And they're like, whoa, I'm like, you don't know my fucking backstory, you don't know my life. And they're like, I know I don't know your life because we just met and we're strangers at a party. And I'm like, so we're not gonna exchange numbers and become friends. Is that what's happening here? <laughs> So, so that's that, and I'm like kind of starting to get really, really scared because um, I wasn't sure that like, let's say I got married someday, like would I have to have like pomegranates on top of a squash butt, like the bottom of a roasted squash instead of a wedding cake? And like would I like ever go on a date at a, at a restaurant again? And like would I ever like go to a bar and like not have seltzer again? 
um, like would I ever have a convenience food? Would I ever, even ever be able to travel again? I was getting really scared and that this wasn't like this like fun personal growth challenge or like this cooking experiment anymore. It just sucked and I was really worried. I was really worried. And um, I didn't want to be glued to my kitchen for the rest of my life. And if I wasn't the leftovers queen, like who was I? <laughs> So a year into this diet, I try reintroduction again my way, completely on my own. I try a food, I try it the next day, I have symptoms, I try it the next day, I have symptoms, I try it the next day, until I hope that the symptoms dissipate, and they do, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> and it works for 85 foods in a row, and I'm getting my life back, and I'm getting my identity back, and I can eat these foods, and by Halloween of this year, I'm reintroducing eight new foods a week. It's amazing, and I feel like shit on it for a different reason every few days. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, and I even venture out into like eating at restaurants again, too. Um, and it was like a, like a rocky transition, it was like a little bit non-linear, like, which is to say that I gained 10 pounds in two weeks over Thanksgiving. But like, um, who didn't? <laughs> um, like, who didn't do that? Um, and I was like really happy to be among the millions of Americans who suffer from confusion, identity, uh, identity loss, and like feeling like a blob and fatigued and gassy on Thanksgiving weekend in America. <laughs> I was one of millions, and it was it was fucking fantastic. <laughs> Um, a few days later, a good friend from out of town flew and he knew nothing about what I was experiencing. He brought us a bottle of wine from his favorite wine shop in Chicago. He's a wine guy, what are you gonna do? And I said, fuck it, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> so I have my first glass of wine in over a year. And I'm drunk after three sips. <laughs> I'm dancing like I'm at a psychedelic bar. Um, I have a great time and then the drunkenness, you know, does its thing and it, after a few hours of fun, my friend has to go to the airport I fade into bed and I'm just swiping on Tinder, you know, and it's pathetic, but that's normal. <laughs> and then I text, I text my real life crush, um, things. Uh, I say things, I say some things. I say some things I will always regret. Um, <laughs> regrettable things, you guys, regrettable things. Um, but also like, that's really normal too. Um, and I was like really grateful to be making normal mistakes again and like paying normal consequences. <laughs> so in this past year, you know, I've grown a lot. I've, I've experienced a lot. I, I learned that you can actually go to Mariano's um, and like have like a checklist of your groceries and you can like buy all of those things. And you can like encounter a free sample and like say no and like not die. <laughs> like that was, that was really informative. Uh, that that's possible. Um, I went two autumns without a pumpkin spice latte and I remain a white girl. Um, I celebrated my 28th birthday with no sweets. Um, I did things with an avocado that had been previously unimaginable. Um, I did things to a squash, for a squash, like you tell me that should be fucking illegal. I did things to a cucumber that would bring a grown ass man to his knees, okay? But the biggest takeaway of all, of all this shit, other than like mind body awareness, which is like arguably extremely important, blah, 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 is a recognition that all these years, it wasn't just that I loved food. I loved the social connection that came with it. And, um, you know, eating will always be one of my core values. That's established because, like, I get it, okay. But um, the fact that, um, yeah, <laughs> the fact that uh, when Carrie, um, Carrie invited me to his Christmas party this year, uh, how much I know now that food is about being together, and he texts me and he's like, Allison, you're gonna be plenty of food, so come hungry. I'm really, really pleased that I just say, cool. And I do. Thank you.